Little Qinglong Lin Huan's Travelogue to the World of Tiva Little Qinglong, Lin Huan's admiration for the gentleman is indescribable Little Qinglong Lin Huan's deep love for this world, the place she is in, and her hometown she still wants to give her husband a lot more. More love. To her beloved. Her story, her friends, and everything around her. Chapter 1. Little Qinglong Crosses Through. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Lin Huan, as an ordinary gamer in the real world, is an emperor chef and a social animal. Growing up alone, earning money to support an old father. She never imagined that one day she would really cross that long corridor and open the door to a different world. Behind the door, there are images that I have seen on my phone or in my dreams, different but extremely similar. This is already wonderful enough but even more wonderful is still to come. Choose one or two, only one person can go into this world, right? The spirit of the woman in the green shirt floated out of the pale blue dragon's body, floating to Lin Huan's side. Looking at the girl who was a bit panicked when facing the majestic maintainer of the heavenly principle, she wanted to touch her head, but it was all in the form of a soul that couldn't be touched. She could only symbolically masturbate, don't be afraid, sister. Do me a favor, help me take good care of little Qinglong, okay? You can use everything on her body. The maintainer of heavenly principles, I choose me. The spirit of Qinglong closed its eyes slightly, and a faint light flashed in its eyes. It passed away in a flash, and a faint smile appeared again. So in exchange, I will give up everything I have and hope you can let her go. The woman's hand gently lifted, bringing a gust of wind and pushing her towards the dragon. From now on, you will be me. Presenting a unique and immortal nature, living for no one. Explore, experience, and find your own story. At the end of that memory, it was the gentle and lonely look of the woman in the green shirt who looked at her with a smile, Sister Ching Long gave me her body, but I cannot have it for free without taking any responsibility. I want to find her, it may be difficult, but if there is a chance, I will do it. Perhaps this is the significance of me coming to this world and embarking on this journey to another world. Lin Huan breathed a sigh of relief and leaned against the railing of the Wang Shu Inn, blowing the night breeze while looking at Xiao from the side. This is my story, the immortal of Shi Dot. I am Lin Huan. After entering Li Yue port, Lin Huan did not pause and took the initiative to search for the afterlife hall. The reason for finding Shishingtang is very simple, because she graduated from this major before coming to this world, so it can also be considered a major match. That day, it happened that Master Hu was on duty. He was kind-hearted and pitted her alone, so he warmly accepted her and gave her a room to live in. No interview, not yet, because Mr. Zhong, the guest who was able to interview her, was not there that day. Hu Jingtang noticed that day and night he pitied her for being alone, without any relatives or connections, so he casually arranged a place for her to live in the hall. The girl who followed him around for the next few days, accompanied him to do things everywhere, and for most of the month, she ran all over the port with him, busy all day, without taking any effort. And it was obvious that she was very familiar with people and didn't seem like a novice at all. So, trust comes naturally. Soon, an acquaintance curiously asked him if this diligent and hard-working girl had found another heir to inherit the mantle of the ancestral hall. No, no, it's not like that. Lin Huan shook her head, wearing a black ceremonial dress and a straight and slender figure. Mr. Hu gave me a place to rest, and I worked for him as a reward. She thought for a moment and suddenly gave a playful smile. I can't just stay in the room of the Shirshing Hall for nothing can I? I would also feel embarrassed if that's the case. The middle-aged man looked in his eyes and nodded with his hands behind his back. If that's the reward. It's also quite good, he doesn't mind having an additional equivalent contract. Chapter 2 Meets the Emperor You are listening at NovelFull.audio One day, there will always be some free time to spend in the classroom without any suitable things, and that day is like this. 
Lin Huan sat in front of the counter holding a book about the history of Liu Airport, feeling a bit tired from reading. He was nodding and daydreaming. Suddenly, the voice of Master Hu came from behind. Xiao Huan, come over here for a moment. I'll take you to meet someone. Okay, I'm here, Uncle Hu. Lin Huan was aroused and put down his book in response, then turned around to open the door and walked towards the back hall. After passing through a long corridor, I finally saw Mr. Hu's back. He stood under the tree, with a set of stone tables next to him, on which tea utensils were placed, and the aroma of tea was overflowing. At the back of the stone table sat a straight figure, carefully brewing a cup. Xiao Huan, this is Mr. Zhong, the guest of my ancestral hall. If you have anything, you can ask him for advice. Master Hu paused and suddenly smiled, I'm just asking him for advice. You need to hurry up because he's not in the hall on weekdays, and the dragon doesn't show its head or tail. Lin Huan trembled and looked up at him. It looks like a very unfamiliar figure, very young, with a face and eyebrows that are not as outstanding as she imagined. It has an ordinary appearance and is not eye-dot catching. But the temperament is calm and elegant, as thick and firm as a mountain, properly converging the sharp momentum into the fabricated mortal body, strict and without any trace. Yes, that's him. The Rock King Emperor transformed into thousands and millions, walking in the world, even if it was not the body she was familiar with, it was still him and worthy of respect. And originally, from a long time ago, he had already been a guest of the Hall of the Dead. Lin Huan, have you met Mr. Zhong? In a daze, she heard her voice coming out uncontrollably and falling into his ear. You don't need to be polite, he replied in a low, but not familiar voice to her. Come and sit down and have tea together. Lin Huan looked at Mr. Hu beside her, this time it was her own will. If her elders didn't sit down, she couldn't lose her courtesy. Mr. Hu was taken aback and then smiled, then turned around and sat down next to the person. All right, don't be nervous, you can sit down too. He reached out and patted the seat next to him, smiling. Yu Hong, have you seen me? This is Lin Xiaohuan from our family. He's quite an interesting little guy and a very useful helper. Well, his strength is a bit weak. It doesn't matter. He still lowered his head sipped his tea, and slowly swallowed it before whispering, there are some things that need to be integrated in countless practical battles. Have you been learning swordsmanship with Mr. Hu? It's okay, run with him more, run to dangerous places more, and be in danger to hone yourself. You will always find the trick. Don't worry, the day will be long. Lin Huan's gaze fell on him for a long time, then he chuckled softly and nodded. Sir, I have learned from you. Speaking, he picked up his cups and cups, took a deep breath, and took a light sip, leaving a long aftertaste. Lin Huan slowly relaxed and listened quietly to the two people sitting next to him talking about time and customs, without any taboos. At this time, it was still the Rock King Emperor. More than two thousand years after the end of the demon god dispute, she had not seen any major disasters in history or heard of any in the public. So, she could confirm that the timeline at this moment was before the Korea disaster. Suddenly, the topic shifted to the celebration of the Liyue festival, and Mr. Hu patted Lin Huan's shoulder, bringing her back to life. Xiao Huan, you came at a very opportune time. In a few days, you will be invited to the Immortal Ceremony Ceremony. It is indeed a tourist attraction that locals rarely visit, but it is worth watching for newcomers. It is recommended that Xiao Huan go and admire the miracles of the emperor to strengthen his faith in the emperor. After all, when you come to Liyue and stay in the Hall of the Dead, you will be your own family, right? Go and pay respects to the emperor and his elderly family. Lin Huan smiled silently and took a sip of tea. Is that right? Of course, it has already been. Mr. Zhong coughed. In general theory, this is indeed an annual event that cannot be missed when visiting Liyue. The main reason is that the timing is too tight, so I highly recommend going there. 
Lin Huan couldn't help but laugh. Okay, I have received suggestions from two gentlemen. I will go and take a look in a few days. Because I have already met the gentleman. It doesn't matter whether I go or not, but the gentleman recommended it and went to see it. It's okay to join the fun. It's also great to be able to make a wish. I hope to find traces of my sister as soon as possible. Two wishes. At this moment, the two gentlemen sitting beside me can be safe and happy year by year. Zhongli, who was sitting on the other side, was slightly taken aback. He quietly turned his head and focused his gaze on the little guy chatting with Master Hu Jingtang. After staring for a long time, Fan Ro lowered his gaze and smiled silently. You are a good child, I have received. Your wish, naturally, will definitely come true. Chapter 3 The Journey to the Immortal Classic Ceremony, Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio That day, Lin Huan put on the most beautiful peach-colored jacket and skirt she had bought with her monthly salary, and after bidding farewell to Master Hu, she left early. This day is an annual celebration. The foot traffic on the Long Street has already exceeded the usual level. There are also many people setting up stalls along the roadside, selling everything, and you can hear the shouting of the vendors one after another. The busy traffic on the road almost fills up the main road. The happiest part of the day was actually the children. They collected pocket money from their parents and spent a carefree and happy day playing. They came out of the house happily, with small figures interspersed in the crowd. Lin Huan noticed that almost every street vendor selling snacks and trinkets was surrounded by a group of children. Lin Huan stopped in front of a small stall selling ice drinks and asked the vendor for the price of ice cinnamon drinks. Looking at everything around him, he couldn't help but cover his mouth and chuckle lightly. It was really so cute. There are people walking among the crowd, and naturally there are also people leaning against the railing on the second floor, watching the tourists from a high position, as well as the vendors rushing to Yijingtai in order to hear the Emperor's New Year's edict in a timely manner and obtain New Year's business opportunities. Those old men, while listening to books, poked their heads out and looked downstairs, occasionally heard a few loud sighs, which were comparable to the voice of the Tianjin old man who was rumored to be cursive on the internet back then Lin Huan's ear power is very good, so he can't help but laugh bitterly. This is a bit. However, she also understands the feeling of crowds coming and going in scenic spots during the National Day holiday, where locals sit and watch outsiders travel. Oh, of course, there are also locals who have been living in Liyue for a long time and have turned a blind eye to the annual prosperity. They don't care what kind of festival it is today, but just manage their own storefront seriously. Watching the crowd stop and come, they know that there will definitely be a huge income received on this day. They squint their eyes happily and feel satisfied. Lin Huan is not as eager and hurried as those business travelers, nor as leisurely as the children and onlookers. Her goal is clear, but she comes out early and can slowly walk that way, holding a warm and delicious cup of osmanthus cheese, and buying a sugar skewer on the roadside. She savors it while walking forward. She knows she will definitely arrive at the scene on time before the ceremony, so she doesn't have to rush on her way. A familiar sound suddenly came from the railing on the second floor. Miss Xiaohuan, are you going to pay respects to the emperor? Lin Huan looked up and smiled brightly. Yeah, Lu Bo. I've never seen Mr. Emperor before since I first arrived. I don't want to miss out on the annual ceremony of the Immortal Classic. Mainly, this year is my first year at Li Yue, and I want to go see him with my own eyes. To be honest, she had never seen such a majestic and miraculous gentleman with her own eyes. Moreover, it was not in the game that the brown dragon, which had crashed from the sky and had no vitality, scared her heart at first sight. Knowing that being exposed by the drama was fake, it was just a game played by Mr. Zhongli, who wanted to retire and test whether the people of Liyue could cope with the crisis alone. But at that time, she still felt a huge shock. She had never seen before, 
earnestly answering questions from seven stars, merchants, and people praying for business opportunities in the new year, and earnestly responding to the wishes of her own people. She wanted to meet Mr. Yen Wang Dijuan, who was not yet retired, and just take a look from a distance. Haven't you seen the immortal ancestor's dharma appearance yet? Mr. Lu on the second floor couldn't help but laugh. That little girl must go and take a look. When I first went there, I was still young and followed my parents to pay respects to the emperor. Roar, that's quite a solemn dharma appearance. In short, it's sacred and subtle, and I need the little girl to see it herself before I can have a clear idea. Uncle Lu was fiercely slapped by Hall Master who behind him. You're still chatting with Xiao Huan, really. I don't know if the ceremony is about to start in a quarter of an hour, and I don't know if there are people blocking the mountain path now and they can't move at all. Oh, I forgot. Don't leave the little girl to chat anymore. Hurry up. The main road of Yujingtai is crowded with people, and the little girl may have to be blocked for a while now, so she can't move in or out. Hurry up. The ceremony is about to start. Lin Huan's heart tightened as he bid farewell to the two uncles and quickly walked in that direction. As I approached, I realized that it was indeed the case. I couldn't even enter the arch, let alone climb up the mountain. There was no choice but to turn back to the entrance of the old bridge Tianheng mountain range, fortunately there were not many people there. She let out a gentle sigh and slowly walked away, her figure turning into a blue stream of light, disappearing into place and climbing up to the most noisy part of the mountain. Mom, the little girl in pink just now disappeared from her original position. Don't be afraid, Xiaoji. This little sister is probably going to pay respects to the emperor. She's the fairy who guards us. Maybe. Mom, we don't have to be afraid of immortals. Right. The little boy watched carefully as the figure disappeared. That figure, how do you look at it? It's all Lin Huan from the Shersheng Hall. Is she a fairy? She is usually very kind to herself, and today she hurriedly left to attend the ceremony of inviting immortals. She lives in the afterlife hall with people, living in harmony and happiness. She will definitely not want her fairy body to be exposed. The self who knows her secret must keep this secret and not tell anyone else. The young woman also gazed tenderly at the place where the figure had disappeared. She bent down to touch the child's head and smiled. Yes, my child. You don't have to be afraid of the immortals, just like you don't have to be afraid of the uncles of Qianyan army. We can trust them without reservation, just like we trust the emperor. Because they are all heroes who protect Liyue and protect us. Okay, I understand. Mom, when I grow up and learn my skills well, I also want to be a guardian mother, a hero guarding the land of Liyue. Join the Qianyan army and protect our country. Good child, good ambition. The woman crouched down and touched Xiao Ji's head with a soft smile. But now, Xiao Ji, do you remember what you're going to do? Go play happily and worry-free. The pocket money has been put in your pocket, and your friends should be in a hurry. All right, go now, ah. Chapter 4 The Journey to the Immortal Classic Ceremony, Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Stepping over a grassy slope, passing through a small bamboo forest, hiding behind stones, I found that there were not many people on the platform of the ceremony site, but a large part of it was blocked on the mountain path and couldn't get up. Lin Huan glanced at the time, um, it's still early. She slowly swayed into the crowd and inadvertently took on a figure, pretending to be coming from the other side of the mountain path while squeezing forward to find a place with a good perspective. She watched the seven starred servants busy setting up the altar in front of and behind the venue. Stop dot. For a while, Suddenly a cold and crisp soft drink came from behind. Then, a slight weight was added to the shoulder and someone lightly patted it. Lin Huan didn't look back, his eyebrows lightly raised, revealing a faint smile. Ah Huan. I thought you were also squeezing along the mountain path with everyone. Huh, so you came up from the other side secretly, 
no wonder Grandma Ping and the others didn't see you there. All right, it's okay, I know, everyone knows. This is your first time coming to observe and invite the immortal classic ceremony. Gan Yu's mischievous laughter came from behind. Indeed, this is Lin Huan, the first immortal he met in Liyue Airport. When uncle who took him to the general affairs department to handle his identity, he coincidentally met him. He met eye to eye and later found an opportunity to exchange opinions. He is now a good friend. Gan Yu smiled and patted Lin Huan's shoulder. Are you going to meet the emperor later? I, still. Lin Huan lowered his head, Gan Yu, let me be an audience for now. I'm not ready yet to expose my psychological state in front of people. Little Chilin let out a light sigh. Okay. Well, when it's over, let's meet at the mountain pass, okay? Master wants to see you. Very good at chatting, really. And Grandma Ping Lin Huan nodded with a smile and said, Okay. Oh, I've seen Grandma Ping before. She's very nice, approachable, and respectable. I really like her. That's settled. Don't be nervous, Master is also very good. Gan Yu nodded excitedly and pulled Lin Huan to the nearest incense burner, laughing. First time to come to Liyue, could you please make a wish? The wish made on the immortal ceremony is very effective. The emperor will bless your wish. Mmm. Lin Huan smiled, lowered his head, closed his eyes, devoutly united, and bowed three times at this moment, her mind was peaceful and there was no extra sound. In front of the incense burner, she always does this. For some reason. Ah. It's on. Gan Yu smiled happily. The emperor has responded to your wish. Ah Huan, your wish will definitely come true. Suddenly, the voice of a soldier from the Qianyan army came from over there. Secretary Gan Yu. Lord Tian Quan, please. Ah Xiao Huan, I have to go now. You can walk around the area. It's over, don't see you or leave. Okay, Gan Yu, go ahead and get busy. I won't disturb you anymore. I'll be wandering around, it's okay. Gan Yu walked away, leaving Lin Huan silent in front of the incense burner. When she turned back to the stone, she hid her body, thought for a moment, and decided to turn into a little steamed rolls with meat inside with short hands and short feet. She climbed onto the stone several times and put her hands on it. She coiled up and looked at the busy people below. The warm sunshine of early spring shone on his whole body, and the drowsiness of waking up slowly surged in. Little Qinglong coiled up in a ball, peacefully and slowly falling asleep. Feeling the scorching sun shining on his body, Lin Huan's little green dragon rolled over with a smile, sat up, and regained his human posture. Sure enough, at this moment, the stage is already well dot organized, the offerings on the altar are neatly arranged, and there are also many people surrounding the audience below. Fortunately, I am in a hidden state at this moment, otherwise I would have been exposed. She looked up at the sun and knew that noon had arrived. She picked up her cups, jumped off the stone, hid in the crowd, and took a light sip of her drink. In no time, the timed bell rang. Mr. Tian Quan of Seven Stars stepped forward, lit incense, pinched the formula, and then the golden light pointed straight into the sky, causing clouds to surge. Her eyes were sharp, and at a glance she could see the huge dragon body swirling in the sea of clouds, powerful claws, soft and floating auspicious cloud dragon tails, and a pair of calm, firm, and wise eyes. Noticing his own gaze, he looked over and nodded, taking only one glance before moving away. Immediately after, the giant dragon cleared the clouds and hovered down in front of several gentlemen. In the following conversation, Lin Huan didn't listen. She leaned against the stone pole behind her and stared foolishly at the majestic dragon that covered the sky and sun. Suddenly, a strong sense of homesickness surged in her heart. She grew up in an orphanage, with relatively indifferent social interactions and no particularly profound ties. The only connection with her homeland is the land itself that nurtured and raised her. 
It was like the last glance in front of the watchtower, cutting off the last trace of connection between her and her homeland. She knew in her heart that there was no return date for this farewell, but longing was only longing. Since she could never return again, she confidently and firmly took big steps forward and opened her own poetry. As a descendant of a flower-growing country, she possesses enough pride and memories to support her through this long, non-human rebirth. Chapter 5 Like a Tired Bird Returning to the Forest You are listening at NovelFull.audio The crowd slowly dispersed, and Lin Huan followed the crowd and walked down the mountain. She still remembers that there was an old tree at the end of the mountain path, and two glass lilies were planted in the altar. This time is definitely extremely prosperous, so these days when I'm running errands, I can see Grandma ping around from time to time. She only felt friendly, always reminding her of the patient mother of the orphanage who treated her and her friends very patiently. So. I always come forward to say hello, so I get to know each other well. The immortals were waiting there, but with so many people, she could only slowly move over and meet them. Night slowly fell, although he couldn't hear it, Lin Huan could feel that the background music of Liyue Port was becoming softer. She turned to look at Ping Xian sitting on her left side, leaning forward to chat with Lu Yunjinjuan. They should be a rare gathering, and the atmosphere was excellent. On the other side, Ganyu was dozing off with her arm resting on her head, swaying and swaying. With her other hand, she was clutching a stack of documents, and a few sheets of paper were about to slide out, shaking and falling. Lin Huan couldn't help but chuckle lightly, with half of his attention focused on her side and the other half reminiscing about what happened today. Today, I met Lu Yun and borrowed the wind to become a new friend of Gan Yu. I also met Gan Yu's teacher and elders. She did not show off her true identity as a crane, after all, in broad daylight, she cannot scare the people. She wore a water blue long shirt, tall and graceful, exuding a ethereal aura. Seeing herself and Ganyu slowly handling things behind her, walking slowly, she didn't say anything, just nodded slightly. You are in this world, we should support each other and move forward. The path you have chosen is too long, although it is lively, it is also lonely. You fellow travelers, please take care of each other and not scatter. Lin Huan was slightly taken aback, his eyes lit up slightly, and he said softly. Senior, I will. Thank you very much. Suddenly, a gentle pat came from above, followed by Grandma Ping's gentle and gentle laughter. Lin Huan regained his senses and found that at some point, there was no trace of the cloud immortal left by his side, only someone who patted himself and someone who was dozing off sitting next to him. The three of them sat opposite each other, with a crescent moon, a pot of tea, and three cups. Xiao Huan. Grandma Ping smiled at the stunned girl, do you like it, Liu Port? I like it, of course I do. The dim lights, the blooming flowers on the street, and the bustling scenery left her lingering. Here, it was too much like the place she couldn't go back to. She was greedy, longing, and this kind of heart was drifting and flowing, soft like a feather flipping and spinning in her heart, but also like a small knife stirring the skin and flesh after being drugged, with a dull pain that made her sigh to herself, sigh for self-reflection, and this was some knowingly meaningless melancholy. She looks very much like my hometown. Looks very much like it. With a gentle lament, she drifted lightly and scattered in the wind. Do you need a hug as comfort? Ah. You're welcome, I know you need. Thank you. Lin Huan closed his eyes and snuggled into the warm embrace of the immortal. It only took a moment, just a moment. Good kid. You can treat this place as a reliable hometown. It's okay. Ping Xian could feel a drop of dampness falling on her shoulder. Then, little Qing Long raised his head and gave himself a very bright smile, with a star in his eyes but still full of energy. All right. I shouldn't be sad for no reason. Grandma Ping, thank you very much. I'm fine now. Mmm. Ping Xian smiled and touched little Qinglong's head. 
You missed me. You can come here to chat with me. The blooming period of the glazed lily is long, and I have been here all along. And gone you, you can invite her out of the moon sea pavilion anytime. Lin Huan chuckled lightly. Naturally, I have to urge her not to work too hard. Grandma Ping, what are you talking about? You're so happy. Oh. On the other side, little Chilin woke up, and the next second, the shaky files in his hands scattered all over the ground. Lin Huan crouched down with a smile, helping to pick up scattered documents on the ground, organizing them, and pushing them towards the Chilin girl. Thank you very much, Ah Huan. Oh, it's so late, I should go back now. Gan Yu exclaimed in surprise, Goodbye, Grandma Ping. Goodbye, Ah Huan. Grandma Ping, I should go back too. Thank you for your hospitality today, and I'll treat you to tea again next time. Go ahead. Number 34, so goodbye number 34, Gan Yu, who had run two steps forward, turned around and bowed to Grandma Ping with Lin Huan. Then, stepping on the city lights, he disappeared into the vast night like a tired bird returning to the forest. Chapter 6 Time flies in a blink of an eye. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Zero returning to the original place, the rain is howling, and it is a lonely place. But at this moment, a gun suddenly pierced and tore through the rain curtain, rolling up a chilling wind. It quickly pushed away the demon that wanted to move forward, and within the radius, no one from the hill dared to approach. The girl took a soft breath and said, Hey! This gentleman! I've already opened a hole for you. Come over here and wait for what? In the line of sight, an adventurer crouched with his head in his arms among a large group of hill people, layer upon layer, but a corner had already been pointed out with a gap, clearly indicating the direction of the young girl's gun. Mr. Lin Huan said helplessly, don't squat down. It's useless to hold your head as a turtle with a shrunken head. A gentle sigh came from the wind, and the next second, there was a moment of weightlessness. Hu Xingji noticed himself soaring high, breaking free from the encirclement of the Chiu Chiu people. He was carried by someone and landed in a safe place by his collar. Looking back, the spirited young girl, leaning on her long spear, looked at him with a tired face, and hesitated to speak. Hu Xingji stood up and chuckled. Thank you very much to my benefactor for saving me from danger. My benefactor is beautiful and kind-hearted, and he is a great person. Lin Huan glanced at him twice and said. Sir, it's better not to say such things in the future. Number 34, why is that number 34, the adventurer blinked his eyes. Because, Lin Huan thought for a moment, your mouth is too cheap, it's easy for people to want to beat you up. After speaking, Lin Huan didn't care about the person's expression and turned around to leave. The adventurer looked at the slender figure slowly disappearing before his eyes and couldn't help but laugh. Sure enough, she is beautiful and kind-hearted. Little sister, one, sir, today I met someone who was trapped in a crowd of hills and hills. I opened a gap for him, but he didn't know he had escaped. Oh my god, he was an adventurer. Liu a port, in the backyard of Shirshing Hall. The deity sat at the stone table under the Osmanthus tree, looking down, gazing, and listening to the girl sitting on his other side, pretending to be helpless and complaining. In fact, a smile was flying from the corners of his eyes and eyebrows. But you still saved him, didn't you? He added softly in a calm voice. Ah. Yes, I have encountered you, I should not let it go. Lin Huan smiled helplessly. You did it right. Mr. Zhongli nodded in approval, then stood up and walked towards the open campus. Come with me. Um. Sir. Ten years, let's see how much entry you have made. As he spoke, a powerful and heavy gun shot towards Lin Huan. Here we are. Lin Huan's eyes were sharp, but he had already taken precautions. He took a graceful step back and dodged this fierce hit, then lightly drew his right long sword, 
sticking to the gun's momentum, and effortlessly dissipated the force of the next move, with cunning hidden inside. So after passing nearly a hundred moves back and forth, Lin Huan finally gasped and threw away his sword, pretending to cry. Ah, uh, I can't do it, sir. I've reached the limit. Isn't that enough? Mr. Zhongli said in a loud voice, hasn't it reached its limit yet? Ah uh, really can't do it anymore. Lin Huan cried, I'm almost exhausted, sir. Mr. Zhongli remained silent for a moment, expressing his helplessness. Watching the gentleman turn his face slightly and his eyebrows furrow slightly, it seemed that he was really a bit angry. Lin Huan was startled and immediately stood with a heavy shoulder, putting away all the previous mischievousness, and his sword sharp stabbed towards the gentleman. Sigh, Mr. Zhongli sighed lightly, but there was a hint of a smile in his eyes. After all, this is how we are willing to take it more seriously. The silly girl has been deceived. Sir, you deceived me. Lin Huan exclaimed pitifully, with an incredibly exaggerated expression. You. Should. This way, you can have a longer memory. Mr. Zhong Li's face was heavy, but his hand strength slowly eased. After a few moves, he slowly stopped and withdrew his gun. The tacit understanding between the two is actually very strong, they have never used immortal methods or divine powers, but rather compared their martial arts skills. At this moment, crisp applause and heroic laughter came from outside the school field. You two are both acting experts. However, it's only when Xiao Huan can walk to such a level without leaving his master behind that he's exhausted. It's also considered that he has made some progress. Even if he encounters a strong enemy when going out alone, it should be no problem. Uncle Hu. Ten years of hard training, don't you want to go out for a walk? Do you like Liu at port so much? Uncle Hu. Zhongli looked at the little girl with a smile and ran lightly out of the schoolyard like a pink butterfly, running to her trusted elder and holding his hand, like a cat, humming and chirping. I can't bear to part with you. Can't I also bear to part with sir, silly girl? Sigh. A child with solid eyes. Master Hu sighed and said slowly, let's go out and take a look. We can't always keep you confined in a corner. Ah Huan, be good. Zhong Li's deep voice rang out, listen to Uncle Hu, that's right. Start from the territory of Li Yue. Wang Xu In, Juayun, Qingzi Manor, Nanshanman. Go look around, go for a walk, be obedient. Also, if you encounter someone with business or something on the way, you can easily handle it. If it's okay, there's no need to pay the compensation. It's okay to pay for the road expenses. Master who chuckled lightly, I know you have a special way of exceeding the limit. Ah. If Lin Huan were still a fluffy little dragon, he would have almost exploded. And then Mr. Zhongli gently stroked his head. Then, it was easy to smooth back the exploded fuzz. Sir, it's really a foul. Lin Huan said weakly. Ah Huan, see you next time. I hope to see you further in your studies next time. Are you leaving, sir? Lin Huan suddenly felt reluctant. Although it has been like this for the past decade, it still remains the same every time she encounters it. She still cannot do it and is accustomed to bidding farewell to Mr. Zhongli. She knows she can't be stubborn and obedient, but in front of him, she always finds it difficult to control herself from him perhaps it's because of being spoiled and arrogant. Well, I'm leaving now and there's still something I need to complete. You should spend more time with Master Hu these days. Then, when you go out alone, it's better to set up a companion. Well, I will. Lin Huan looked at Mr. Dijuan like an old father worried about his daughter being bullied when she went on a long journey, chattering incessantly and couldn't help but shed tears. Sigh. Why do you still cry after so many times? A crying dragon. Zhongli reached out and embraced the little girl, comforting her softly. It's not that we're not saying goodbye anymore. Ah Huan. Don't be afraid, I'll keep an eye on you. You know. 
Dot. Lin Huan burst into tears again. She couldn't help it. She might have really become arrogant because of her favor. She couldn't help it, and she couldn't control herself either. My sir. Sob. It took a while before finally calming down. Lin Huan twitched and watched as the gentleman's figure disappeared at the entrance of the memorial hall. Chapter 7 Towards the Star's End You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The familiar laughter of Master Who came from around. To be honest, no matter how many times I watch it, I still think the little girl is too cute, Uncle Who, you're joking with me too. Lin Huan said softly in a hoarse voice. Hmm. I'm not joking anymore. Master Hu nodded and walked over to her, shoulder to shoulder, looking into the distance. Actually, it's been so long. You should have gotten used to Mr. Shen Long's occasional lack of attention. I know you're actually deliberately trying to make him feel more relaxed. I understand. In our small world, there's no need to think too much about those complicated and complicated affairs. You can let go of it and just be yourself, which is great. There are still many things we can't do, but in the parts we can do, we also want to be self-sufficient and don't want him to worry. I know. Uncle Hu, you. Lin Huan rubbed his eyes and then smiled brightly. Oh, actually. I can't hide it from you. Yeah, I guessed it a long time ago but. If he doesn't mention it, I won't expose him either. I want to give him a lot of love. I want him to know that our love for him is also very, very heavy. The eyebrows and eyes of Hall Master who were filled with a bright smile. Lin Huan was slightly stunned, looking at the slender tail lines of the Hall Master. He smiled and squinted, with a youthful and youthful appearance. Suddenly, it overlapped with the adventurer's figure he had seen earlier in Galiyuan. What was this situation, and what was he thinking? Lin Huan angrily complained about his wild thoughts. 3. After standing at the intersection for a while, the old and young people turned around and closed the door in agreement. Then, night lights lit up in the room, and the voices of the two of them talking and laughing could be heard, until the bright moon was covered by clouds and the bustling harbor fell into silence. In the next few days, Lin Huan continued to accompany the hall master, doing things everywhere when there was business, and occupying the desk reading when there was no business. She did not actively mention leaving, so her elders did not urge her. That morning, Lin Huan got up early and watched as the room was clean and tidy, with clothes he didn't wear hanging neatly in the wardrobe. The small bag he was going out to pack was placed by the bed, and he smiled happily. He turned around and pushed the door open, bathing himself in the sunshine. Just as I stood for a while, I heard a hurried knocking at the door. Quickly walking over and pushing open the door, I found that it was the tea house owner who often came to find elders to drink tea. Uncle Yang, what's going on so early? Good morning, Xiao Huan. This letter is for Uncle Hu. Can you help me hand it over to him? Believe it. Yeah, that unworthy son. Old Hu probably rarely mentions him to you, right? Old Hu's only son was supposed to be the young master who will be in charge of the Hall of Death in the future, but ah. Uh, oh really? Let's not mention him, okay? Behind me came the voice of Master Hu, who had no emotions. Has he left again? I know. Let him go. His father is still here, his family is still here. Does he dare to come back and take a look? That's natural. This kid yearns for his ideals, but in fact, he's young and energetic. When he hits the south wall outside and suffers, he'll come back. Okay, let him go. To gain more knowledge. I'm not afraid he'll run somewhere. Lin Huan's emotions were very calm. After turning around and handing the letter to Uncle Hu, he quietly retreated to the side and didn't answer any more. You probably haven't seen that stinky kid of mine, have you? Yes, that guy has always dreamed of becoming an adventurer since he was young, hoping to venture around in different places when he grew up, 
but he didn't show any interest in his family's business. I trained him well for a few years, but later he ran away with hard wings and I don't know where he was. Really, he just sent me a few letters recently, telling me about his recent situation. Farewell to Uncle Liang, master who closed the door and walked towards the backyard with a smile. While opening the letter, he carefully read it. Lin Huanan followed behind quietly, nodding to indicate that he was listening. Ah Huan, could you please do me a favor? Actually, there's nothing I need to do. I'll write a reply later, and you can help me take it with you. If I see him outside, can you help me hand it over to him? That kid is quite free-spirited, but his skills are good. You don't need to put in extra effort to take care of him, of course, I would be happy to. Lin Huan took a step forward and smiled, holding the master's hand. I feel like. I've seen him once before. Really, I've been acted in a wave. Ah uh, ha ha, really. Master Hu shook his head with a smile. It's really something he would do when he meets his old friend. Don't pay attention to him, he did it on purpose. Next time you meet him, you can beat him back, beat him up for me, and give him a letter. Tell him that if he doesn't come back, there won't be a spot for him at home. See if he will come back. Okay. I will definitely bring it to him. The two of them looked at each other with a smile, and Master who reached out and patted Lin Huan's shoulder, saying with a smile. You and that kid are really different. He yearns for a vast world, while you are willing to accompany someone and guard a corner of the home. And I, I used to restrain that kid, hoping that he could grow up peacefully and continue to pass on the legacy passed down to me. Sure enough, time will change many things for people. And meeting you has changed me a lot. Ah Juan, my good child. I hope you, towards the stars. Master whose eyes showed a hint of sadness. He raised his hand, pressed down on Lin Huan's shoulders, and gently and firmly pushed forward. At this moment, all words have lost their meaning. Lin Huan's nasal cavity was a bit sour. She lowered her head, held back her tears, looked up at Master Hu, grinned, revealing neat and white teeth, and her eyes curved into beautiful crescents. She smiled. I will, thank you. Chapter 8 Farewell to the Harbor You are listening at NovelFull.audio all right Xia Huan, this letter is for you. I won't say much more. Remember, when going out alone, be careful of your safety. Remember, I will wait for you at home, and the room at home will always be reserved for you. Lin Huan watched as master who waved his hand and walked away gracefully, holding the freshly baked family letter in his hand, unable to move his gaze for a long time. Just now, she had already returned to her room and carried the small package that was about to leave, and now, it was indeed time to leave. Uncle Hu. Goodbye, she said softly. At the entrance of the Shengsheng Hall, Lin Huan turned around and closed the door. After taking a deep look, he no longer turned back and walked towards the port. She remembered that the last time she saw that person was on the other side of Galiyuan, it was raining heavily. She remembered that there was a faint shadow of Wang Shu in in that place. Just take your time. Fate will always bring us together. Perhaps they will meet at Sumeru, or maybe not. Passing by the cloister pavilion and carved beams and painted rafters, which she loved deeply, she stopped at the top of the long and steep stairs, listened to the voices of businessmen who opened the door early to do business, heard the faint sound of horses' hooves kicking in the distance, and gradually revealed the clue along the Tianheng Pass from far to near. And on the other side of the port, she has already started to be busy. A new day has finally begun, and she is about to embark on a new journey. Slowly traversing the bustle of the dock, reluctant to stop at the bridgehead, then turning back to depict the bustling port city with affectionate gaze. It took a long time before turning around and walking briskly towards the mountain path. I had intended to stop looking back, but as I passed by the signboard, I was suddenly stopped by a clear voice. It's Sister Lin Huan. Right. Looking back, 
I saw a young soldier from the Qianyan army calling out to me. He was holding a black tassel spear in his hand, with a straight back and a majestic demeanor. He was wearing armor and looked very serious, but seeing me instantly made me noticeably happy. Um, it's me. I, Sister Lin Huan, you're going out, right? The young soldier looked at her shyly and whispered, My name is Xiaoji, and I live in a village at the foot of Tianheng Mountain on the other side of Sanwangang. I don't know. I don't know if my sister still remembers me. Ah, it's you, Xiaoji from the small town at the foot of the old bridge and the mountain. Of course I remember you. Yes, I went out and looked everywhere. Lin Huan smiled, I remember ten years ago you were so young, and in a blink of an eye, you grew up to be a towering adult, taller than me. It's really great. Sister Lin Huan, you haven't changed either. It's also great. The young soldier hesitated a bit as if he wanted to say something, then shook his head and showed a slightly shy smile. It's nothing, I wish you a smooth journey. 5. After bidding farewell to the young soldier, Lin Huan smiled and quickly walked up the mountain, then stopped again at the pass. Beside the official road, Gan Yu led two horses and looked at herself with bright eyes. Gan Yu, you. Lin Huan exclaimed in surprise. Ah Huan, it's like this. The emperor gave me a break for a while. Kicked me out and asked me to rest for a few days. But he kicked me out while he was too busy to sleep all night. That's really outrageous. Gan Yu slightly aggrieved pouted. Lin Huan rubbed her head in tears and laughter. All right, don't complain anymore. The emperor is not easy, and he has been so busy that he feels dizzy and disoriented. Let you come out to relax and rest. You can't let him down for his hard work. Anyway, since he finally came out, I won't let you go back easily. Ah Huan Gan Yu took his friend's hand and smiled, My good Ah Huan, where should we go first? In our current direction, I plan to first go to the Wangshu Inn and take a look. Then head north along the Dragon Ridge Snow Mountain to see Mond. After seeing Mond, then. The Great Abyss of Layered Rocks. Lin Huan pondered. Ah Huan, have you ever seen Xiao? Gan Yu suddenly became happy. That guy has been guarding Shu in all along. The road to Dewazu is not far away for a moment, and it's also hard. How about we go find him and bring some delicious food to reward him? Lin Huan smiled helplessly. Okay, I'll listen to you. 5. Hurry up and arrive at Dihua Island before sunset, and on the first day, choose to stay at Wang Shu Inn. After settling down, the two of them came out, one lying on the railing and looking down at the gradually slipping sunset, the distant mountains, and the smooth road below. Taking a deep breath of fresh air. Watching the pedestrians, vehicles, and horses coming and going on the commercial road below, the elevator slowly rises and descends with relish. What do you feel? Lin Huan turned around and looked at her friend. It's very warm. Gan Yu chuckled lightly. It's very peaceful, different from the daily hustle and bustle in Liyue Port. There aren't many opportunities to stop and watch quietly. I understand why the emperor kicked me out to rest. Indeed. It feels pretty good. It's great to think that way. It's great not to disappoint Mr. S. Hard Work. Lin Huan's smile suddenly paused. It seemed like he was starting to miss him again whether it's hustle and bustle or tranquility, they are all beautiful daily lives. Regardless of which side of the world, peace and prosperity are hard won and worth feeling and nurturing with heart. Such vast and magnificent mountains and rivers, people who work so hard to live, the precious treasure in their hands, has been built with blood by predecessors. Two ladies, the voice of the shop assistant came from behind. Dinner is ready, please come with me. The shop assistant quickly approached and walked beside Lin Huan. Miss Lin, the gentleman you just wanted the shopkeeper to check on has already checked out a few days ago. In which direction did you go? It seems to be in Sumeru's direction. Okay, 
I got it, thank you very much. Turning a corner, the two of them saw a small wooden table placed on the terrace near the outermost edge. Three or four dishes and a pot of wine were on the table. A straight figure stood with their backs to the fence, gazing at the gradually darkening sky. The figure was slender, long dot lasting, distant, and cold. She. Gone you took a step forward, long time no see. Mmm. She leaned over and nodded at Lin Huan, let's stay for a few days and rest before we go back. There's still no shortage of people on the Emperor's side. Mmm. Gan Yu leaned against Lin Huan and whispered, I can only accompany you here. Ah Huan. It's okay. When I come back, I'll come find you and go to Grandma Ping's place to have tea together. It's also great. Ah Huan, come back this time. Gan Yu. Lin Huan shook his head and looked at the dimly lit horizon in the distance, his gaze calm and candid. Even without this contract, I would still do it. This is the contract I signed with myself. She, who was sitting at the table, looked over and raised the corner of his mouth slightly. He picked up his wine glass and gestured. Touch it. Lin Huan smiled. Hmm. The collision of three wine glasses made a faint jingling sound, echoing through the night breeze. Chapter 9 A Moment of Floating Life you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The next day, Lin Huan got up early. Without saying goodbye to anyone, he left the room and led his horse away. Running along the mountain path, she let go of the reins and wrapped herself in a cloak, feeling the cool morning breeze with water vapor blowing on her face. It was cool, not too much, just a little bit, enough to make her energetic. Without a destination, Lin Huan set off his horse and walked for half a day. It was noon in the sunshine, and Lin Huan found herself walking to an unfamiliar place. Lin didn't know where to go, and the distant mountains were hidden in the clouds. But suddenly, from far to near, she felt a strong and chaotic aura approaching her. Control the horse, Lin Huan doesn't know whether to fight or leave. She couldn't guarantee whether there was any other way for the demon ahead. Perhaps it was a trap, but perhaps it was just a narrow encounter or something else. Therefore, she chose to stop, her palm turned into a long sword, and she stood ready. There was a thumping sound coming from the ground, and the thing was stepping hard on the ground, slowly approaching. The horse was restlessly spinning and kicking in place, and Lin Huan sighed lightly. He dismounted and patted the horse's back, driving it away. Moreover, not far away is a thatched cottage, although simple and dilapidated, still exudes a sense of life. On a small table in the courtyard, there is also a large bowl with half-full wine left in it. Obviously, someone lives here. So she can't leave. If she turns around and leaves at this moment, then the demon will be the first to attack this household. In the distance, a big hand lifted the branches and leaves, causing a rustling sound. Then, the sound of the branches on the ground creaking and being trampled off was heard. Finally, the demon appeared in front of him, revealing his true face as Mount Lu. He is a tall and powerful man, his face concealed by a ferocious Noah face, unable to tell his true appearance. He was wearing coarse linen pants, with a bare upper body and purple badges tattooed on his shoulders and back. He was domineering and dancing wildly, clearly different from ordinary people. It was obvious that he had returned from hunting, with a long fork on his back in one hand and a wild chicken in the other. Surprisingly, there were two hands falling behind him, waving their teeth and claws in an incredibly fierce manner. Lin Huan was taken aback, his gaze flickering and loosening, but he remained vigilant and did not take a step back. She knew this person. And when she saw those four hands that were completely different from ordinary people, she should have recognized them. She didn't expect to see him here. It should be said that she didn't expect to meet him. Floating House In the dark disaster that had not yet occurred, I fought alongside the Qianyan army to the death, guarding the unnamed Yiksha of the layered rock abyss. 
Finally, together with the strongest soldiers, they attracted and sealed the warcraft to the depths of the Abyss Underground Palace. That was a dead end with no return, but they entered without hesitation. The general died in countless battles, defended the mountains and rivers unscathed, and lived a harmonious life. Brother Shi, I'm sorry. Impolite. She took two steps forward and whispered. The long sword in the palm of the hand was stretched and transformed into a sharp spear, striking heavily in front of the body. Looking at the young man in front of me rushing towards me without saying a word, swords and knives facing each other. Yiksha never sits idly by. He roared and threw away the half-dead pheasant, waving his four strong arms as he rushed forward. Dang! A piercing metallic impact sounded particularly piercing in the open forest. Lin Huan clenched his spear, stabilized his body, and took seven or eight steps back in a row before stopping his footsteps. Yiksha only took three steps back to stabilize her figure. Sure enough, it's very strong. Truly worthy of being the leader of the five great Yikshas, Marshal Tingsha. Lin Huan was stirred up with a sense of war and turned around to charge forward again. Sorry, Brother Xiao. Only by consuming some of your strength can we prescribe the right medicine for you and help you regulate the damage of your karma to your body. This reason is somewhat unreliable, but there is no other way. Marshal Tingsha is too strong. Moreover, at this moment, she is possessed by a demon and does not distinguish between us and the enemy. She is not confident that she can cure him while he is in his prime the only way is to weaken his stamina, so she may still have a chance to suppress him. Lin Huan gritted his teeth and fought fiercely against Yeka. At this moment, there is only herself, and since she has met her, she will not sit idly by. Zhao's elder brother, who is also an unknown hero she admires very much. She has a small wish in her heart, perhaps the gears of fate, can rotate slightly for a moment. If so, she hopes that in the end, at least, he can soberly choose whether to move towards his own ending. She has this ability, so she will never stand idly by. This is a fierce battle, fought until night falls, only then can the winner be determined. Lin Huan seized the opportunity and offered his own life tool, only to hear a simple bell sound, which seemed to have magical power, enveloping the man's entire body in waves. Fuxia was slightly taken aback, as if feeling something. His body movements slowed down for a moment, and Lin Huan didn't miss a single flaw. Taking advantage of the situation, he slapped his neck with all his strength, and Yeka fell to the sky. His four hands shook and swayed, but he could never get up again. Lin Huan took a deep breath, withdrew his gun and supported the tree trunk, taking a deep breath. Come on, these days will probably be spent here, and we won't be able to walk much anymore. Maybe. It's just. Damn it. Brother, thank you for your hard work. You will, slowly. Get better. After gasping for breath, Lin Huan also fell upside down, watching the stars in the sky gradually darken. At night, the forest is quiet, except for the chirping of insects and birds, the occasional barking of dogs can be heard from afar. Chapter 10 A Moment of Floating Life, too. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At night, Lin Huan woke up in a daze, feeling a hint of dampness on her body. The patter of rain in her ears tightened her heart. Oh no, it's raining. Despite the pain on his body, he struggled to sit up and was then supported by a firm hand on his shoulder. You, the man's voice was deep and pleasant, it's raining, let's. Come inside. You. Lin Huan grinned in his heart. If he had the strength to jump, he would really be in pain, now, it's not the time to talk. It's raining, go in first. The voice of the floating house was very soft, and the quiet yiksha was very gentle, or rather, gentle. You, your injury is not minor. This house is my residence, safe. Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Yeka. The two of them supported each other and entered the room together, finding a clean place to sit down. I'm very strong. 
You've been fighting for so long, and if you don't lose out, find a chance to defeat me. You're also very good. No, Brother Yekka overestimated me, I just took advantage of it. Lin Huan couldn't help but be praised and whispered, Actually, I'm really happy to see you. I miss you very much. Lin Huan whispered. Xiao. Yekka's erect pupils looked over in confusion. My friend. You don't even remember Brother Yiksha, he. Is your family. My family, Fuxia whispered, mine, my family. I am. All right, it's okay, it's okay if you can't remember it. Let's take it slow. The memory will come back. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Lin Huan stood up hard, moved towards the man, raised his hand, and gently patted his broad back. I should have apologized to you about what happened just now. But the situation is urgent, and I have to come up with this plan. I'm sorry. Lin Huan whispered as he gently patted Yekka's back. Listening to the dripping rain outside the window, the two tired people leaned against each other, comforting each other and slowly falling asleep again. 7. The next day, Lin Huan was awakened by the bright sunlight. Rubbing his eyes, he sat up and looked out the window. The tall figure was sitting at a small table, with a large pot of wine on the table and a fire burning at his feet. The wild chicken that was thrown to the side during yesterday's big battle had already been taken care of, torn in half, and roasted golden crispy on the fire rack, emitting heat. Lin Huan stretched lazily, stood up, walked barefoot out of the door, approached, and smelled a tempting aroma. Are you here? Fu Xia looked over with a big smile, stood up, walked to Lin Huan's side, pushed her to sit on a stool, and then squatted down. He took half of the chicken from the fire and threw it into a bowl, then placed it in front of her. Wait a moment, don't move. Lin Huan stopped him as he was about to squat down to pick up another piece of meat. Let me see your hand. Yiksha hesitated and stopped his movements, squatting and looking up at her, then extending all four of his hands in front of her. Ah Huan closed his eyes in pain, raised his hand to hold the hands of Yi Cha that had been burned, and carefully examined them. However, the redness and swelling were severe. New wounds were stacked with old scars. How could you touch such hot food with your hands? It's really. Well. Lin Huan took a deep breath. Don't be sad, it doesn't hurt. How could it not hurt? Lin Huan retorted in a low voice, forget it, just wait for me here obediently. Don't run around, okay? I'll go find medicine for you now. Yiksha, who loses his memory after waking up, is really well behaved and obedient. How long are you going? Very soon, very soon. Your eyes close, open, count sixty times, slowly count. Don't be afraid, I'll be back soon. Lin Huan touched his soft black hair, watched him close his eyes, count gently. Then turned into a blue wind and disappeared lightly in place. The next second, Lin Huan appeared on the Yujing platform. It startled Grandma Ping sitting at the table. Ah Huan, you. Grandma Ping, it's like this. Please help me prepare some anti-inflammatory and swelling-reducing prescriptions. I'm in a hurry, please. Lin Huan whispered. Also, do you know any posts that can calm the mind and eliminate malaria? Ah Huan, you. Grandma Ping was a bit confused, but as an immortal doctor, her subordinates were still very quick. With a few strokes and a few patches of medicine, they were all ready. I don't know what the condition of the patient you need to treat is, but I have heard from the emperor about the prescription for calming and detoxifying the mind. It is prepared for the Yiksha who fights against the remnants of the evil and demonic gods on the battlefield. Thank you very much, Grandma Ping. For helping me with my urgent situation. Lin Huan held the big and small bag that was handed to him and leaned slightly. I don't have time to sit anymore. Someone is waiting for me very urgently. I'll invite you to have tea at Xinli Pavilion next time when I come back. As he spoke, he disappeared into place again. 
What's wrong with this girl? Suddenly. Grandma Ping stopped in place with some confusion. Before returning, Lin Huan thought for a moment and went to an ordinary people's clinic to get some prescriptions and liquor for treating injuries caused by falls. He leaned against the corridor railing by the lotus pond and carefully observed what he was holding. He saw that everything he needed was complete before it turned into a stream of light and dissipated.